I love my Stream Deck. For a while now, I've been trying to figure out how to get a Stream Deck into virtual reality so that I can attach it to my wrist and be able to toggle off and on buttons without having to lift up my headset, try to find out where the stream- let alone being able to figure out how to even get it over to my space. I do use voice attack for a lot of my OBS controlling commands, but I run out of hotkeys and there's some things that I just wish I could be able to easily toggle off and on without having to use a voice command. <sighs> Will you stop squeaking, puppy? When I'm sitting at my computer, all I need to do is push a button and it'll toggle off and on whatever I need in OBS. Boom, easily done. Unfortunately, this doesn't work so easily when it comes to VR. The first problem being, depending on where your setup is, you might have to run a really long USB extension cable over to the area. Second problem being, you're not gonna be able to really easily see the Stream Deck without lifting up your headset or if you've got pass-through technology, you're gonna have to be able to enable that. I wanted to try this idea initially with the official Elgato Stream Deck mobile app, but unfortunately it does have a monthly fee. I think like the cheapest price was three bucks a month in order to use it. And I don't like subscription services and I figured you probably won't either. I would much rather pay a higher flat rate fee for a program that I can use forever. So I've come up with an easier solution on bringing a Stream Deck into VR that involves a program that is a lot cheaper and has a lot more functionality than Elgato Stream Deck anyway. Uh, I've used it in a couple of videos in the past, and that's Touch Portal. I want to preface this video by saying that I do use an Android phone, so we will be using a Samsung program. However, there's probably an iPhone version of the same thing out there somewhere. All the programs that you need in order to get this working are free, except for OVR Toolkit, but I recommend getting that just because it's very versatile. I use it for other things like being able to see chat for my VR live streams. Uh, otherwise, Touch Portal itself is also free, but the free version comes with a limited amount of buttons and pages. If you buy their pro version, which is a flat rate, then you can get up to 110 buttons per page and an unlimited amount of pages. So, let's show you how it's done. First thing you're going to want to do is to download the Samsung Flow app for both your phone on the Google Play Store, as well as for your desktop through the Microsoft Store. You're going to want to follow the instructions once you've installed it in order to pair it, but it's a pretty straightforward and simple process. Samsung Flow basically allows you to bring your phone over to your PC and control it through either your phone or your desktop. Now you'll know that you have it set up right after the instructions if you click on this button for the Smart View window and it should automatically be able to bring up your phone. You can navigate it, you can use the desktop exactly like you would on your phone itself. Download Touch Portal for both the desktop and mobile version and go through the basic setup for that as well. I've done a tutorial in the past on how to set this up and I will make sure to post a little card on the top showing you how to do so. Otherwise, as far as setting up the various buttons for it, uh, just treat it like you would a normal Stream Deck and add whatever functions you'd like on it. Just to keep it simple for now, I've only added a record, desktop audio, and a microphone button, but there are so many different things you can do with this. Those, again, will you can find in videos that I've done in the past and videos that I plan on doing in the future, so make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of that. So when you first add a button to Touch Portal, you basically just click on one of the blank button spots. But for ease of visibility in VR, you're going to want to make sure that you add some sort of text. Uh, I'm just going to call this one toggle because I don't know what else to call it. Make sure you set it to be below because we're also going to add an icon. Now Touch Portal automatically comes with its own icon packs, but you can pick your own if you'd like. I'm going to select, I don't know, we'll pick this eye photo. That way you can actually see what you're going to be hitting in VR. Make sure that you open all of the apps that we're going to be using. That's going to be Steam VR, obviously. Um, touch Portal and make sure that it's on the page that you're actually going to use. Make sure that Smart View is open and again that your phone actually has this menu open and available as well as OVR Toolkit. Once you have your VR headset on, getting OVR Toolkit to open will depend on the type of controller that you're using. But for me, I'm using the HTC Vive ones, so I hit all of the grip buttons twice. That brings up the menu. 
Now what we're going to want to do is spawn new window and we're going to change this. So hit switch window, go down to smart view, Samsung flow. There we go. But we don't want it to have all of this extra crap in the background. I mean, you could, but what you can do, and this is relatively new to OVR tool is you can actually crop the windows. So what, how this works is you've got to spawn masks. So we're going to use this to cover all the spots we don't want. You might have to spawn multiple in order to cover everything. All right, and also in the window settings, uh, I recommend making the window a lot smaller so it's more wrist, wrist size and make sure that you select keep visible, but make sure that block cursor input is unchecked. You want it to stay in the white. So once you have it to a size that you think works best for you, you're gonna use the grip buttons to drag it over to your wrist and you're gonna see drop window here to attach to hand, so we'll put it there for now. And then we will use the grip buttons again to make any adjustments. So we've got that there. I think I'm gonna make it a little smaller still. And you can also change things like the opacity. Uh, frame rate, I reckon, recommend putting it five because you don't need 60 just for a stream deck. Visibility, you can also change so you're less likely to accidentally see it while you're in the game. So I usually turn those on. So now you won't actually be able to see it until you're looking directly at it. And then again, to close the menu, just hit all the grips twice if you're using the Vive controller. So now that we've got it on our wrist, we want to be able to test it. You will see like a little blue cursor so you know what you're clicking on, but I honestly recommend kind of clicking again somewhere in the box without directly being on a button so you can make sure that it's actually toggled. So right now we have it so our desktop audio is on, but if we push, there we go, there's the cursor, push that, and now our desktop audio should be off. And there you go. It took me so long and experimenting with so many different programs to be able to get something like this to work. So I hope that you get a lot of use out of it. I plan on doing more touch portal tutorials in the future, so feel free to hit that subscribe button so you get notified on when those come out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask or hang out in my Twitch channel. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific. I also do more VR and OBS tutorials over on my Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash atombombbody. And since you're at it, feel free to join the Discord. I will post a link to that in the description below as well. Until then, keep on creating and never lose that drive to improve. I'll see you on the next one.